Hey guys, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel for what is going to be another review tutorial. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy the most recent one, or actually the first one I did. Only one so far up on the channel. It's uh, that one that I did of Pure Cosmetics. They had a lot of new stuff out recently and so basically what these videos are is a, kind of a one brand tutorial but it's also a review. I'm telling you what I think of each product as I use it and then at the end of the video we have a look to kind of uh, complete it, I guess. So recently Tarte had their friends and family sale 30% off the entire site. So I took that as an opportunity to not only pick up some of the latest launches for summer, like the Rainforest of the Sea collection, but also kind of like get on the bandwagon with stuff that I'm totally late to, like the In Bloom palette. So if you want to see how to get the look that I'm currently wearing using all the products that I just mentioned and more, as well as learn what I think about them, whether I'd recommend them, who I'd recommend them to, let's go ahead and get started. For this look, I am gonna be starting with the eyes first. And because I'm working with a powder shadow this time around, I don't have to worry about fallout. So doing those first, starting with primer, and I actually have never tried a, a Tarte Cosmetics eye primer. So going in with Too Faced Shadow Insurance, pretty, pretty trusty. That's how much I am using and it's across both eyes. You don't need a whole lot of this stuff. Now moving on to eyes, the shadows that I'm using are coming from the new Tarte, well not new, I'm so late to this, but the most recent eyeshadow palette to launch from Tarte, it's the Tartlet in Bloom palette. This is the second version. The first one was primarily plums and neutrals and entirely matte. This one has a mixture, a nice mixture in my opinion, of satiny, definite shimmer shades, as well as a lot of mattes. And unlike the first one, no purple. Instead, there are kind of more burgundy, primarily cool, leaning shades in here. There is a gorgeous copper, but even that has pretty cool undertones. So first I'm gonna go in with Sweetheart. It's kind of this lightly mauve leaning matte down here, sweeping that through the crease. And this is the L fluffy kind of crease brush, running that through my crease. The funny thing about the first Tartlet palette is when I filmed my top matte eyeshadow palettes video that I will link somewhere over here, if you wanna go give it a watch, a lot of you asked if I had tried that because it was your favorite. And the truth of the matter was I had. I actually got the Tartlet palette pretty close to when it initially came out. And it's not that I don't like it, it's just that I didn't feel like it had a spot in my top eyeshadow matte eyeshadow palettes because like I said in the review that I did way back like I said, when it first came out. Um, it's, a, it's a fine palette. I didn't like how it felt like there were a lot of really close shades in there. They just didn't vary up the hues of the mattes enough. And so between all of them having the same matte texture, great matte texture, great matte eyeshadows, I just felt like there was a lot of the same kind of shade going on that once you applied it, you really couldn't tell a difference between all of them. So I preferred something like the It Cosmetic Celebration palette, something to that effect. So just in case you were wondering, I have absolutely tried and have and own the original Tartlet palette. It just isn't my favorite. So I was really excited to see the mixture of shimmers in this one. Now with that built up, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Rebel, the shade right next to uh, Sweetheart, and place that in the outer, outer half of my crease. So to get this to blend in with the rest of my crease, I'm just kind of doing circular motions on the outer corner here and then blending it on inward with the, whatever is remaining on the rest of my brush. Just like that. Then for my brow bone, I'm going in with the matte shade Flower Child up here just patting that right underneath my brow. And then I'm using, this is from It Cosmetics, it's the crease slash concealer brush. This is the It Cosmetics for Ulta. And so I'll go in with the flat shader side and then use the fluffier side to just blend the boundary between those two. Now taking that same flat brush, I'm going in with what is quite possibly my and probably everyone else's favorite shade from this palette. It is Firecracker, this beautiful shimmery bronze shade here and using that flat shader to really build up the pigmentation across my lid. Then taking the narrow edge of that same flat shader, I'm going into Firecracker and Rebel, the deeper matte shade I put in my outer crease, and I'm running that along my lower lash line just so I get a nice mixture of the two. I don't mind that it's what matte or shimmer, one way or the other. Just a nice mixture of the two so there's that continuity from top lid to lower lash line. Then I'm going in with this smaller guy and Funny Girl, which is a pretty basic but beautiful shimmery champagne shade and applying that to my inner corner to brighten things up. So that is it for now for the eyes. I might wanna go in and add a little bit of drama to my outer corner, but we're calling it, calling it a day for now. Just going in with liner. This is one of the Lancome Drama Liquid, 
yeah, Drama Liquid Pencils. This is in the shade La May, which is really just a gorgeous kind of flesh tone, but has a hint of shimmer to it. So it adds a little bit more brightness. This also works as a great base for the inner corner. If you find like me, when you have dry, itchy, watery eyes, I don't know how eyes can be both dry and watery at the same time, but my man should do it pretty much every day. Um, I have sometimes issues with my inner corner shade sticking. So adding a pencil like this underneath will help that stay in place. With that in place, I'm going in with mascara. This is Tarte's Trusty Lights Camera Lashes. Not the waterproof kind, not the one with, isn't there one that came out? Maybe it was limited edition for summer that had like shimmer in it. This is the normal formula and this actually came, it's a fresh one that came in a 500 point perk from Sephora that I got two orders back, I think. This is definitely one of those mascara formulas that because it's so, it's been around for so long, it's easy to forget about. But the reason it's been around for so long is because it really does amazing things for the lashes. Every time I go back to this, I absolutely love how voluminous it makes my lashes look without making look spidery or clumpy. It adds a, a good amount of length. I wouldn't call it super lengthening, but it's definitely good for those who are looking for volume and curl. Like every time I am so impressed with just how much volume this gives my lashes. And I do find personally that I don't need the waterproof formula, although I think there is a waterproof formula of this. Personally, this doesn't budge on me throughout the day, no matter how hot, sweaty I may get, but in case you need it, it does exist and it gives the same effect to the eye. Awesome. All right, with mascara on, it is time for some foundation. And this is probably what I'm most excited to use and talk about in this video is the Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. This guy has broad spectrum 15, comes with a droplet applicator, which I love, except whatever you've heard about this is absolutely true in the way of it potentially getting messy. The entry or like the, the place, the top, uh, is best suited for a pump and and having to put this like foundation coated dropper back in is like a recipe for a mess. So I do find I have to be really careful. Otherwise product will build up around the outside and you'll have a lot of excess wasted foundation. Not cool, but I mean, that really is literally the only shortcoming of this product. The rest of it is amazing. So I'll tell you more about that as I actually apply it. The way I like to do that is put some on the back of my hand like so. And then I will take kind of a fluffier buffing foundation brush. I actually tend to do like two, two uh, pumps of the drop, but this stuff dries very quickly. It's like second skin. That's one, one, the thing that I immediately noticed about this when I first applied it is that it looks, sorry about the traffic. Once again, stinking traffic. Um, one of the first things that I noticed when I was applying this is A, dries very quickly. You have to work very quick, quickly with it. However, it looks like second skin. The formula is so thin. I mean, true to its name, water foundation. It's very thin, but not runny. I mean, it doesn't, it's not like a mess to apply everywhere, but the thin texture means that it dries very quickly, but it looks like second skin, you can build it up and because it's that thin consistency, you don't need to worry about it getting or looking thick and cakey. I was just so impressed with the way this wore. But like I said, I need two pumps of that because I am completely out on the back of my hand and just half my face is covered. But here you can see with a very thin layer on this one side, the difference that it makes with just that. I mean, it just looks so natural. As far as finishes go, I would say this is slightly luminous. There really isn't, it's a very natural lit from within kind of look because as you can see, I mean, there really is no shimmer to speak of and it's not like it has a dewy finish. Like your skin doesn't look wet for lack of a better word. It's just this very subtle, like maybe there are pearl pigments in here. I'm not sure. It's just a very, very subtle. And yet you're left with this really beautiful glow to the skin, but it is completely dry. I mean, when it dries down, it is like powder to the touch. So there is two full pumps buffed completely into my skin. And this stuff lasts so well all day. Like I said, dries very quickly, pretty quickly down to a powdery finish. And then once it's there, it's like locked in place all day. It's unbelievable. Next is a product I'm not so in love with. It's the Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Sealer, basically just a concealer, but I'm not fond of it because it smells like paint thinner or like, I don't like 
something I don't want to be putting around my eyes, but I do anyway. So it comes with this big old doe fit applicator. I just do two little dabs on my inner corner and then I'll use whatever is left over on my brush to kind of touch up around the rest of my face. But um, basically, you'll be able to see here, I think, that it does a good job at concealing, but frankly, no better than another concealer that I may have in my collection, like the one that I have been loving for the past couple months, which is the Derma Blend Smooth Liquid Camo Medium Coverage Concealer here. I've been loving that. It does just as good a job, but it doesn't smell like paint thinner. So there's that. Now this concealer doesn't dry down quite to the powder finish that the foundation does, so I do find I need to set it with a powder, um, but I, I find it lasts as well as any other concealer does, especially when set. So to set that, I am going to use the Laura Mercier uh, Translucent Loose Setting Powder. You know the drill. I'm just in love with the way this foundation looks. It, oh, it looks so natural. This is quickly becoming one of my holy grail foundations, which I've been meaning to put a video together on, like a cross drugstore, high end, you name it, just talking about my favorite foundations. This, probably in there. With that done, it is time for some bronzer, and coming from Tarte, I'm sure it is no surprise to anyone that I'm gonna be using Park Avenue Princess. This one is super old. I have had this, it's like a sample size that I got as like a 100 point perk or something way back in the day as a sample, but it has been going strong, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and dust that on. This is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Radiance Wand. So I'm just gonna work that into kind of as a bronzer i'm not really contouring today just working that into the hollows of the cheeks up into the temple and just generally around the perimeter of my face then once that is on i am going to go in with a blush that i actually only recently got I, I think i may have had a tester of a tarte blush but maybe not with well, the powder blushes anyway and so this one I got in my beauty con it's like a swag bag that I got when I went there but this is one of their Amazonian clay 12 hour blushes in the shade blissful very I mean it's like it kind of looks like a hotter pink than the exterior packaging lets on but just it's a very universally flattering pink. and then I don't have a highlighter from Tarte at least that I could in my superficial dig around my con con collection the words. Um, not that I could find one I dug around my collection today. So I am just going to go in with Funny Girl, that same highlight that I used on my inner corner. And I'm going to go in with a stippling brush. This is a Sigma Duo Fiber Powder Slash Blush Brush or an SF15. It's nice and small enough to get in there. And I'm just going to really tap that off because the shimmer here is, shimmer here is very real. It's not quite as finely milled as something like a Becca um highlighter so i'm just gonna go in with that and very lightly dust the tops of my cheekbones although i'm gonna be very real i don't feel like i have to with this foundation because in case i haven't told you it's so glowy love it love it love it oh as a result i, I don't think i actually said this when i was kind of reviewing it as I was applying this, I would recommend it for, <clears throat> excuse me, for those with combo skin like me, definitely for those with oily skin that like a little glow, you don't, you just don't want it to get out of control. I think this formula is gonna lend itself beautifully to that. Um, the one thing I'm not sure of though is those that might have dry skin. I'm not sure if this will be too dry for your skin because when I say it dries down, I mean this stuff dries down. Not so it makes my skin feel tight and uncomfortable, but I mean, it definitely, um, you know, it's dry. Also, in case you are wondering, this, like I said, is it's really not, you can see, it's not finely milled. There's a definitive shimmer there. If you aren't into kind of a more pronounced shimmer, don't look for this eyeshadow shade as your highlight. Just just a heads up. It's beautiful, I like it, but in case you're wondering, it's, it's not, I don't think it's as fine as it's appearing here on camera, or maybe it's not appearing that fine, but you get what I'm saying. Then onto lips, this also came in that same 500 point perk that I got the mascara in. This is another one of their new, uh, lipsticks in the shade Beach Bum, and I'm trying to read, the print is so small here. It's the Drench Lip Splash Lipstick. It has a slightly, so no taste, but it kind of has a slightly fruity scent. Like I can smell it, but no taste, which is good if you're sensitive to 
taste, but maybe not if you're sensitive to smell. It's not overwhelming. It's very, very subtle. Um, and it applies, it feels kind of like a soft mousse on the lips, very comfortable. And it has a relatively long lasting power. It's not, you know, a lip stain. It's not going to last all day. I would say it lightly stains the lips. So even once the finish is gone, your lips are going to be lightly stained. I get between four and a half, five on a good day, hours worth of wear. And it feels so comfortable. Like even though it has kind of a very soft matte slash satin finish, my lips don't feel uncomfortable or dry or anything like that. So, and I really love the color. Like I said, that's Beach Bum. And it's like just a step above for me what would be like a perfect nude. It's like summertime nude, if that makes any sense. That's all from me, guys. Really hope you enjoyed another review tutorial here on the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.